Welcome back to the Path to Happiness and Introduction to the Unification Principle. I'm your host, Dr. Tyler Hendricks. Christians believe that the Second Advent will bring about the last days and the end of history. Whether you're a Christian or not, it is plain to see that we are in a transitional period of great turmoil and confusion. It is a time in which catastrophes strike like bolts out of the blue. From the perspective of the principle, it is the time in which the final battle between good and evil is being fought in order to prepare to meet the Lord of the Second Advent, resulting in good finally overcoming evil and the happiness the world has been long waiting for being realized. In this session, I would like to talk about the conclusion of the preparation period for the second advent of the Messiah. This story starts in 1914, the start of World War I. World War I lasted until 1918, and it was followed by World War II, which began in 1939, 21 years after the end of the First World War. When the Second World War ended, the world divided into the free world and communist world, which was locked behind the Iron Curtain. The 20th century has now come to an end, and we are in the 21st century. By our historical account, the time of the Second Advent has come and is passing by. Providential history has been moving. The Unification Church arose in Korea after the Second World War. So let's look at what was going on there. It was a time of dramatic change for Korea. Within the 20th century, Korea endured Japanese occupation, liberation from Japan, the division of North and South Korea, the devastating Korean War, and the persistence of the final Iron Curtain at the 38th parallel. From God's viewpoint, history has been a history to restore the world to the original ideal world where the three great blessings are fulfilled. To do so, the history of the providence of restoration has been carried out through dividing good from evil. And so, Abel type and Cain type camps have battled in history dividing good and evil. God seeks for the good side to bring the evil side to change of its own accord through the sacrificial love of God's chosen people. The very touchy question is, which nations are on God's side and which are on Satan's side? It is decided based on the direction of God's providence of restoration. Those who are in line with God's providence, even indirectly, are on the side of God, while those who take an opposing position are on the side of Satan. Don't worry, we're all on Satan's side relative to God's perfect love. We're just talking about conditions for restoration. What's the signal that you are on Satan's side? You're the one who attacks first and that you are on God's side. You absorb the attack and keep loving. This is the struggle of good and evil within each one of us and it appears among nations as well. God has worked his providence through a struggle of good and evil, bringing Satan's side to submission and expanding heaven's dominion, restoring the three, <coughs> three great blessings in the three stages of formation, growth, and completion. Now, physical wars are the result of political, economic, demographic, and personal motives. However, there is always an internal providential cause as well. The same goes for the great world wars. What, is the, what are the internal providential causes of the world wars? First, 
The world wars resulted from Satan's struggle to preserve his sovereignty. Human history under Satan's evil sovereignty will end with the second advent of Christ. Then it will be transformed into the realm of God's good sovereignty. At that time, Satan will put up a last ditch fight, ultimately to kill the Lord himself. Second, the three world wars fulfilled the worldwide indemnity conditions to restore the three great blessings. At the consummation of human history, unprincipled worlds emerged which have realized defectively the outward form of the three blessings. An individual championing Satan's causes, multiplying satanic children, and the conquest of the world under Satan's dominion. To fulfill the worldwide indemnity conditions to restore God's true three great blessings, three world war conflicts broke out by which God could prevail over these satanic imitations of heaven through the three stages of formation, growth, and completion. Atheistic, materialistic communism promised heaven on earth, but became the tool of evil to murder hundreds of millions. Third, the three world wars have occurred so that all humanity could overcome the three temptations by which Satan tempted Jesus. As Jesus' disciples, the Christian world has to follow the course of their teacher and overcome the three temptations that he confronted in the wilderness as individuals, families, nations, and on the world level. Fourth, the world wars have taken place to fulfill the worldwide indemnity condition to restore God's sovereignty. The restoration of this world requires that it first be divided into Cain-type and Abel-type worlds, and that there be three final wars in which the heavenly Abel-type world prevails over the satanic Cain-type world. This is a condition to restore through worldwide indemnity Cain's murder of Abel. After that, the world of God's sovereignty can be established. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to sharing our insights into the Second Advent with you.